Why don't we move on to our next topic today, which is the millennial pause. Yeah, what? I am getting very tired of articles that just kind of talk about the differences between boomers and millennials or Gen Z is is working differently in the workplace. And here's the things that are special about Gen Z. I'm, I'm, just kinda, I'm, I'm sitting here going like, it just kind of hurts my brain because because you're a millennial. I think we all. I think we all learned, you know, very, very young that generalizing, just putting people into oh, yeah. into buckets like this uh, is is not constructive. I think that you can definitely have conversations about, you know, what the impact was of, uh, of a particular generation and of the, the lifestyle that they led in general. I mean, I think you can you can look at the the the, the wealth, the the the. The, the 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 numerous uh, or the, just the the sheer scale of the baby boomer generation and the amount of of wealth that it captured and and continues to hold the power that it captured and continues to hold and you can kind of go like yeah they they were extremely influential but to kind of go you know okay boomer essentially um, and to and to be dismissive of boomers like I've met boomers that are anywhere from completely technically illiterate to being the people who literally invented the computer technology that you and I all enjoy today, the right? internet, yeah, right, like that, 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 basically all boomers, right? Just by by merit of you know when all of this development was happening and how how old that generation was, and in the same way, you know, I'll run into Zoomers that are anywhere from computer whiz kids to kind of me going, D did they have the internet? When you grew up, you know, like I, <laughs> couldn't you have just Googled this? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, 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 why are we having this conversation? Um, anyway, one of one of the dumb, I guess I made the mistake of clicking on too many of these because I, I am interested particularly in sort of uh, office and, and workplace um, accommodation on and, a few of those. and yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, man management techniques and that sort of thing. And a lot of them are really focused right now. Yeah. See, on, Conrad said in chat, I'm a zoomer. I have to, I have to deal with him. Yeah. So I, I got to click on these articles on, on Gen <laughs> Z entering the workplace and all the ways that Gen Z is different and whether it's your, your, your quiet quitting or your, you know, whatever, whatever else, right? Like whatever workplace trends are, are happening and really as far as I can tell trends are less about what's actually happening broadly and more about what's happening loudly on Twitter or on TikTok. Yeah, but that that's a whole separate conversation Anyway, I guess I've clicked on too many of these articles uh, and I got one that I came across that just felt like the stupidest thing ever and I'm about to out myself as a dumb out-of-touch Millennial, but I learned recently uh, what the Millennial pause is called uh, is did, are you familiar with the millennial pause? So other than you saying it before the show, no, I've never heard of this. Okay. The millennial pause is a short pause before you start speaking when you're recording a video. So if you were, say, recording a, a selfie for TikTok, you would go, okay, hold on. Let me just open up my camera here. Yeah, well, I got to turn on my selfie camera. Sorry, I'm a dumb millennial, so my default camera <laughs> position is the the rear camera. Yeah, like some kind of chump. Okay, <laughs> so I would basically go like this. The thing about Luke's shameless self promotion in that Tarkov video is that he has every opportunity to promote himself. I mean, he's on this podcast every week. It's one of the biggest tech podcasts in the world. So I just don't know why he can't be honest with me about the reason that he's talking about this goat creator and this Tarkov thing. It's just, what, he wants more followers for his YouTube channel? I pretty much promised that channel's never going to take off, no matter how hard he works on it. So if he needs more money, why doesn't he just ask for it? It's pathetic. <laughs> And end. Okay. My only affiliation <laughs> in that channel was this, by the way. <laughs> so, <laughs> All right. So but yeah, this, the pause at the beginning of this. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Okay. So, uh, stop. So we go back to the beginning. That pause, that half a set. Oh, sure. Sorry, sorry. I'll show the people. I'll show yeah, the people. The, okay. The, the millennial not showing. That pause where I blink and inhale. That's the millennial pause. And the, the article goes on to explain that with Zoomers, they will just be talking already. 
when the video starts. So I was gonna say, for like a live stream, would we just be mid-conversation when it starts? So that's what I'm talking about. I'm looking at this going, I don't know that this is a, I don't know that this is a generational difference as much as it might just be a tech savvy difference because I know that until the tally light is on my camera's not recording. Yeah. But then ain't nobody got time for me to blink and inhale, I guess. So, yeah, What that, do I make of this? Kind of what I was wondering is like do they just edit their videos better or no, apparently it is some combination of not caring and knowing the exact timing of when your device will start recording so that you are just talking the instant it starts recording. So for us, we would just have to not care because we actually can't know the exact time. Yeah. Well, be I mean, I use so many different kinds of cameras. Like as a, as a creator, I... Well, no, because this is a live sync thing. You don't know until that initializes. Oh, I don't even mean when show. I'm just talking in general, just okay. like any yeah. video. I, I, I promise you as, as a content creator, I will never not millennial pause because it's what, what I'm going to do another take because something wasn't J recording properly. Jaden said in flow plane chat, millennials lean more YouTube zoomers lean more TikTok. different time expectations and constraints. That was my understanding too. And then I read an article recently yeah. that showed that while they do watch a lot more TikTok. They actually watch more YouTube than they do TikTok. I don't know if that's real. It was surprising to me. It might not be legit. I think it was a survey more than like an actual data based thing. So maybe it's not legit. I don't know. But I just want to throw that out there because it's very surprising to me. Yeah. So Huxar in Floatplane Chat says it's that millennials don't trust that the recording has started till they see it has started, which. So they just trust immediately upon pressing the button that it started. Which I guess makes sense because we would have grown up with far less reliable technology. Like I, okay, a perfect example of this is that my Note 9, my old phone, had a little stylus, a little uh, Bluetooth stylus that had a little button on it that I could use as a remote shutter. And one of the things I liked about it most was that it meant that I could hold my phone with my rear camera facing me so I could take much higher quality selfies because I didn't have to be able to reach around and get at the shutter button mm -hmm. or even hold it awkwardly so I you know, had, could reach the volume button. I could just hold it in a way that was comfortable, you know, put the arm around the missus and, and you know, click, 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 click. But because I don't trust technology, I'd be like, don't move. Yeah. Did it actually take? Yeah. No, it didn't because freaking 10% of the time it just f***ing doesn't, right? So I could go get it ready again. Uh, like, uh, I don't know. It, it, guys, help me out here. Apparently there's... A, there's. Am there's... I out of touch or is it the children? No, it's the children who are wrong, right? Like, I'm trying to figure this out. There's a Wikipedia article for Millennial sure, Pause. Sure, hit me. <laughs> The millennial pause is barely perceptible pause is a barely perceptible pause that is present at the start of some recorded videos. Sure. Yeah. It's basically what we've already said. Yeah. You don't do the millennial pause in your YouTube videos because you have editors to cut it out. Yeah, absolutely. So it's just that zoomers take an extra 30 seconds to cut the pause. Like, is that what we're talking about? Yeah, this is funny. This is funny. Float plane chat. This is great. Ben Mitchell says, I didn't even know what this was until you said it. And I now realize I've been doing it on apps like Snapchat. So apparently it's cringe. Millennial pause. Millennial pause is cringe. So you just got trusted. Yeah, your, your, your age is showing grandpa. All right. I didn't know. If you look at professional live productions, you can see the ways they accommodate this. Yeah, actually, that's, that's really true. They don't have a pause because they'll do five, four... So that you just start immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. One of the reasons we can't do that on WAN Show is that our dashboard, uh, like our restreamer, you, you probably noticed that we stream WAN Show on more than one platform. So that means because you can only have, to my knowledge, one endpoint in OBS. Is I that right? So. Okay. I think so. So because you can only stream to one destination, we have to go through an intermediary server. We have to have an extra hop before we actually go live on those platforms. So we go to our intermediary and then it splits out with all the different streams and all the different bit rates that are supported by the various platforms. We are usually live for a while before we go live on YouTube. And the reason for that is that it's like the ultimate millennial pause. You know, we'll be live for 20 minutes figuring out if there's any technical issues that we need to solve uh kind of going okay yeah we're gonna need to play 
uh, audio from my laptop this show. Let's make sure that's working. Um, okay, yeah, everything good to go. All the titles are right. Like, we'll do all of our, our pre-checking while we're kind of live and testing audio levels and making sure that there's no glitchiness. And when we press YouTube and we, and we spool up the restreamer to go to YouTube, there is a, a different delay that... What does it depend on? I actually have no idea because I've seen everything from as long as, I kid you not, about 15 seconds all the way to, you remember that one time a couple months ago? It was immediately live and I, I was caught totally unaware. If you, yeah. if you look back at that WAN show, I don't remember exactly how yeah, quickly I, I adapted sure. to it, but if, if I seem panicked at the beginning of that show, it's because... It's like, whoa, how did it go already? I was expecting to sit there refreshing the page anywhere from half a dozen to a dozen times to see not, that indicator go. I've never bothered to look into, like, what's happening. There. It'd be kind of neat to yeah, <laughs> have yeah. it be consistent, but it's a pretty low priority in terms of development, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's okay. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the, the pre-show is kind of our, our millennial pause. And then at the beginning of the video, because I have to wait for a refresh cycle of that page to know if the so, check is green, I just... So this is why I was saying I think the only solution the, yeah. would be for us to just not care because we would have to be mid-conversation and then you notice that it's live and then we go. Yeah. That would be the only solution. I don't, I don't think like it's a that. problem that needs a solution, though. Yeah, yeah. We I can just be millennial pausers. I think... Uh, are you technically a millennial? I think so. It would be, like, barely, though, right? What's the What's the? I don't line? know the cutoff. Who cares? Well, that's the thing, right? <laughs> is it's all arbitrary. Yeah. I think, though, that in this case, it does a... It, but 20, 26? So you got to be 26. Oh, then definitely. So, yeah, you're definitely a millennial. I identify Gross as a millennial old man. at the very least. Yeah. I've always, like, anytime I see anything that's, like, millennials have ruined... Uh, pl uh, plastic bags. I don't know. Um, I'll be like, yep, that's probably me. I don't know. I always just any article that talks about millennials, I just assume it's my group. I think I'm a pretty bog standard people. millennial. Yeah. 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 Millennials are apparently killing drinking is one of one of the new ones. Um, so oh, yeah, that's us. <laughs> millennial stereotypes. Okay, let's let's have some fun. Millennials are lazy. I mean, wouldn't you be if you didn't have to do everything manually? Just because you walk to school, you know, uphill both ways doesn't mean I should do it. Yeah, it's uh, supposed to be better, right? Isn't that the whole idea? It's supposed to be better. Yeah, for things the next are supposed generation. to improve. Yeah, uh, like now it's only uphill one way. Man, That's good. My mom did this thing where she got rid of her microwave because it was like it it was it making something dependence on you know it was like too convenient and. Blah blah something. I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here going like, you're gonna have a microwave again in less than six months. I <laughs> guarantee it. Sure enough, I was a hundred percent right about that. Nice, oh yeah, nice, oh yeah, nice. yeah. Of course they have a microwave now. And anytime I bring it up, it's like the subject is very quickly changed again, <laughs> which I really enjoy because I I was. I don't know. I, I Sometimes I can be a very direct communicator. I was extremely direct about that when I was like, that's really stupid. So you're just going to take forever to heat things up for, for what? I mean, do we, are we even going to talk about the fact that you're like burning fossil fuels in order to heat things up on your gas stove? In probably not properly ventilated, whatever. Like, it might yeah. be, but probably not. Yeah. I, like, I, the microwave is... Just plain good. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Millennials are technology obsessed. Yeah, yeah well, that's why probably not? true. It, it was, we, we it's just better. The internet happened like while we were growing up. That was a big deal. Well, we're uniquely positioned to see the before and the after. Yeah. Right? Like when I was in grade two, I still remember this stuff. Like, you know how you can have like little snippets, right? Is Valley speak? Like Valley Girl speak in here? No, it's not. Uh, but like, you know how you can like have these little <laughs> snippets of memory or like like little flashes, you know? Like you don't really remember it, but it's like, I know I did this report on boa constrictors. Sure. Why do I know that? Yeah, it was yeah, in yeah. it was in grade two. And and I, I I can almost see my terrible illustration on on the cover of my duotang, you know? <laughs> right? And I still remember the layout of my elementary school library, and I still remember where the encyclopedias were. Yeah. And the other reference books. We did book reports from books, like on nonfiction topics, right? And 
by the time I was in grade... It's like if someone else had the encyclopedia that you needed, because there there would be like, the encyclopedia would be a whole shelf, because yeah. it would be all alphabetized, yeah. and if they had the letter or whatever that you needed, you, need you just have to wait. Or, uh, my school had several encyclopedias, okay. only one relatively current, so you could see ah, if you could find any information in yeah. the older one. Yeah, yeah. Other than that, you were pretty much boned. Then, I was in grade four, five, six, when Encarta, you know, an encyclopedia on CD-ROM became yes. a thing that you could have. Yeah. Then, you fast forward just a couple of years later, and when was Wikipedia founded? Well, you looked that up. Apparently, Wikipedia claims that uh, millennials are people born from 1981 to 1996. Okay. So then Wikipedia came along. By the time I was in high school, Wikipedia was a thing. Was it perfectly trustworthy? Of course not. Is it perfectly trustworthy today? Of course not. But it's get you certainly, it is certainly a better place to start than cracking open a dusty tome. I will <laughs> promise you that, right? Um, and then, and then we lived through the, the move from text to multimedia to video. Right, so we've and kind the of video move was like kind of messy because oh, people think of messy. it now as these like centralized things. Like there's okay, there's YouTube, there's I guess TikTok, there's Facebook with yeah. video, there's Instagram with video, whatnot. At the beginning of video on the internet, it was just all these like random, sure, random, yeah, like, like, like people CNET. with sure. But even yeah. like think about Justin TV before Twitch, yeah. Like it was just a weird janky website that yeah. happened to support live video. Like it was not, it was not corporatized. It wasn't clean. Well, it was and just it wasn't like, organized. No, a lot of right? original video viewing websites. Grounds. You would just download it. Mm -hmm. You couldn't even watch it live. It yeah, would just. Think, you'd see all these thumbnails and you would download the whole video. Where do people even locally. watch like pure ownage? You know. Yeah, I think you had to download. I think you had to download it. And like the Numa Numa video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just had to download that. I'm pretty sure. Yep. Like it was, it was a very, it's, and people would share, <laughs> people would share stuff through just these like insane email chain letters that you would just see like forwarded oh, know, like a million right? times. I never, that was, I was not on that train. That was an okay boomer thing for me. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, millennials are more socially responsible. Um, well, the word more is important. I think that. I think that when it comes to mindless oh. consumption, I, I definitely notice then more who? of it with my with my elders. Yeah. So is the is the more compared to like boomers? I love I love my family or Gen X, but my boomer relatives, the way that they just buy like the dumbest shit and just don't understand why I don't want it. I feel like that's a frustration that I share with a lot of my peers. Gen X is 1965 to 1980, and I yeah. guess Boomer is before that. Yeah, from 1945 so, to 1965. In my experience, from yeah, from my experience, Boomers definitely a lot of mindless consumption. Gen X not so much. Well, my, Boomers my had a lot. Parents, not a lot of mindless consumption. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it also. I mean, but that's the thing, is right. These are generalizations, and there's always going to be individuals. For sure. There's always going to be alternatives. I know plenty of millennials that just mindlessly oh, acquire. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just acquire. Yep. I mean, the habits have changed. I watched certain friends of mine go through that transition of, like, wh where do they get their source of happiness? Okay, it's like sports or hanging out with their friends every day or yeah. whatever in high school or whatever it is. And then they get a job. They stop hanging out with their friends. They stop playing sports. And now it's just, like, buying things or, like, sure. drinking alcohol or whatever. Like, the, the source of happiness shifts. And for some piece, people, it goes to retail. Just retail shopping. therapy. Yeah, yeah. I heard yeah. of that. Yeah. Um, millennials are job hoppers. I mean, I can't say that's been a thing for me, but I, <laughs> I think in terms of generalizations, that's probably a, a truer, a truer trend. I know a lot of people that do. But yeah. like, let's look at the way that the landscape has changed in terms of the workplace. I mean, boomers enjoyed by far the best worker protections of any generation, as far as I can tell. Yep. We went from uh, essentially, you know, a free for all, right? Like realistically, there, there, were, there were two enormous global conflicts in the, in the 20 years leading up to, or 20, 25 years leading up to the baby boomer generation. Scarcity was, was a, a, a huge thing and you basically did whatever it took. 
Um, forget forget about you know protections. There was you know. There's when, also the Great Recession. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well. When did the uh, when did the New Deal when did the New Deal kick in? Uh, was that Roosevelt? I can't remember. So we're talking about this from a North American perspective, obviously, right? Um, but you look at the at the at the trend towards like union employment in North America, and then away from yeah. it as we're going into now just about the least union thing ever, which is would be the gig economy. And gig and now, economy has been sold as a positive thing, but I, I patently reject it. I mean, we had, we had a lot of conversations early on about whether Linus Media Group would take on contractors, for example, which is quite common in the in the production industry. You you would you just hire contractors for your projects, and then at the end of the project, you cut everyone loose, and then you bring on a new set of contractors, some repeating, some new, uh, for whatever your next project is. And I was like, well, no, we're never going to be structured that way. Uh, we just need to make sure that our pipeline is consistent enough that when we, we hire people, yeah, when we hire people, we bring them on full time, and uh, they have the the benefits of being employees. But I would say that for many millennials, it's probably not a choice to be a job hopper. Like if you don't have if you don't have the protections, um, and my brother used to drive truck for the so yeah. in Vancouver there's like some people refer to it as Hollywood North. There's a lot of film done yeah. in Vancouver, and my brother used to drive. He was a teamster, so he'd drive trucks. He would do he would do whatever for for the movies, and uh, he, he did very well for himself. He did a really good job, so it was fine. But uh, it was a contract position yeah. there was a union but he was still a contractor under the union so he'd work a, a movie or a show and then it would end and then see you later maybe he'd have another job lined up maybe not yeah who knows it's again he did well so people would request him so he did fine but like it's a little sketchy you know I don't know. So yeah, I mean, I think yeah, you could probably make that generalization, but it's also I don't think it was a choice. I think if we could just be lifers at one company and have that actually work out fine, that. yeah, then that would be great. There's also been a trend of yeah, needing to hop for for like compensation increases, livable income, yeah, be well, reasons. yeah, because you look at the way, especially at the very low end. The way that compensation has scaled relative to living costs, yeah, yeah. it's ridiculous. So you got a hop trying to grab that. It's also, Jaden pointed this out, and I think it's going to be off my screen, so I don't think I'm going to be able to quote it perfectly. I'm sorry. Um, oh, no, it is. He said, this is the age of the side gig. So we went from one person being able to generate a comfortably healthy enough income for a family of four yeah. to two people needing each of them having full-time jobs and side gigs to barely scrape by. <laughs> like, it, uh, it's been pretty And rough. then there's the next generalization, our sense of entitlement. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that feeling like you're owed something when you look at how things, you know, oh, man. Uh, how, like, impossible it is to buy real estate, every, how impossible it is to own realistically anything. Every time it trends, <sighs> like, Boomer senator or, you know, boomer, you know, investment banker or whatever uh, guesses how much houses cost. Oh, yeah. And the values are like <laughs> or literally. Groceries. Yeah. Not, not, I mean, groceries, not so much because that's a question of inflation. Whereas housing costs are not a function of inflation. Well, okay, They're a so function the, of the, the commodification. The groceries one is yeah. you'll, you'll sometimes hear uh, the question asked of what cost of living is. So they'll say sure. like, oh, you probably have to spend this much on your on your rent, this much on your food, whatever. And the food number is always like, bro, that would feed an average person for like a week, not a month. Like, I have been, I I am in a very. Um, I sent. I, sorry, I, I sent Linus a, a picture. I don't even think it was that long ago. Yeah. Because I was buying this like package of chicken. Surprise, surprise. Um, and it's the exact same package of chicken from the exact same store yep. that I've been buying it from forever. It's and I I don't remember the year gap, but I think it was like five or six years, something like that, and it was exactly double the price. I like that's crazy. I am in a very privileged position where I don't have to think too much about the cost of groceries, and so for many years I didn't look that closely because I you know especially before we had a bigger family it just wasn't that big of a deal as long as we weren't eating out too much. It was fine. It, it didn't Buying really groceries. have to think about it, yeah. right? Yeah. 
even I am noticing it's 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 just it's mind blowing. I, I saw a little I saw a little pack of raspberries. Yeah, they're out of season. Sure. I saw a little pack of raspberries about this big by this tall. Not even the deep one, okay? Pack of raspberries. Yeah, the shallow like tray. It was over ten dollars <laughs> at Nestor's market. I, ten fing dollars. Yeah. It was I, like I 250 on, grams of raspberries. I left Save On with three grocery bags. And it was like 160 bucks. I was just like, oh man. And like, yeah, they were fairly stacked full, whatever, whatever. But like, damn, I don't know. The commodification of real estate does need to end. Um, and then uh, the last stereotype, millennials are praise hungry. I mean. Doesn't hurt. Yeah. All right. You know what? I'm okay. I'm okay with being a millennial. Yeah. <laughs> Give me my avocado toast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's actually pretty good. I, ne I yeah. never liked it. You gotta it. get tuna and cheese too, though. And I like tuna and cheese on my avocado toast. My uh, my <laughs> partner made some for me, and she had like red onions on it, mm. along with the avocado, mm. and like all this other stuff. Sounds expensive. And I was I was pretty sold. It was actually like probably pretty expensive. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Man, we went out for dinner. That <laughs> was really expensive. And it, okay, I the biggest problem was it wasn't that good. Like, look, I've got kids. Okay. <laughs> I don't really, I don't really go out anywhere other than, you know, stuff some food in your face and feed your brood kind of places. You know what I mean? So we'll, yeah, we'll hit the IHOP or whatever. Yeah. But we went to kind of a, like a mid scale place, like a little bit nicer than IHOP, but not like, uh, you know, Gotham Steakhouse yeah, or whatever, like, you it's know, not, like just it's not too crazy. Like, but it's like a nice enough. Yeah. And still like a chain or whatever though. And like, what was my entree? Like $26 or something like that? Yeah. And it wasn't even big. No. It was pasta. Yeah. It was pasta. <laughs> it's practically free. <laughs> Just fill the f***ing plate. It's like cheaping out on the rice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, mine was really expensive too. It was, it was like, I don't know. I w I w in that case, I would have been more happy if I thought it was the better. But it really wasn't that amazing. Um, yeah, but then, I mean, we were talking about it while we were there, too. And it feels like the relative cost of groceries versus restaurants. I feel like groceries have, has gone up sharper than restaurants have. I don't because, know. Because, like, if I compared... I just haven't eaten out enough, so it's hard for me to know. Well, because I was thinking about when we went to dinner when I was at the grocery store. And I was comparing some of the costs of the things that would have been included in my meal. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, that was really expensive. Also, they didn't really make a ton, considering someone had to cook all this and it had to be served, and we took up space yeah. in an establishment and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, like, there's not that many people in here, yeah. so you know, rent has gone. <laughs> yep. So like all these different factors, I was like, wow, I really they they didn't hose me here. Like, yeah, it just is really expensive. Yeah, I don't know.